Please open your textbook, Framing America, A Social History of American Art by Francis K. Paul to chapter 18. Within this chapter, we see the picture of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, founded in 1870, also referred to as the Met. Our textbook mentions that, quote, the founding of the Metropolitan Museum was also a statement of American prestige on an international level, according to Paul. The design features both Gothic and Renaissance influences. Regarding the Gothic style, we read, it was a time when Christianity unified all social classes. This unity was embodied in the architecture of churches and cathedrals. The Renaissance, on the other hand, celebrated a mix of secular and sacred forces. So extensive was the use of Renaissance forms in all areas of the visual arts that the last decades of the 19th century and the first decade of the 20th century came to be referred to as the American Renaissance, according to Paul. Within this lecture, I wanna delve deeper into the Renaissance and Gothic styles and provide you with more historical background on those styles and how their influence extended to American architecture. Let's begin with the Renaissance style. Our textbook mentions that mentions massive Roman arches as well as Corinthian columns that make up the outer facade of the Met as part of the Renaissance influence. We actually need to look farther back into history to see where these two architectural features emerged and how they found their way into the Italian Renaissance and then into American architecture. The Italian Renaissance was partly inspired by ancient Greek classical architecture and Corinthian columns were actually developed during the Hellenistic phase of Greek classicism. It is within Greek classicism that we see the emergence of Corinthian column, capitals on columns. The capital is the upper portion on top of the column. And there are two others that were developed prior, Doric and Ionic. The Parthenon features Doric columns. The Corinthian is the most complex and decorative of the three. It is the most ornate and features acanthus leaves. If you look closely at the photograph of the Met in our textbook, you can see the distinct leafy cap Corinthian capitals upon the columns. They are near the round arches of the windows. Many US government buildings feature Greek classical columns and capitals in their design, such as the US Capitol building in Washington, DC. Our textbook also mentions the usage of Roman arches as part of the Met's design. I wanna mention that the round arch was popularized by Roman builders and they prominently used round arches for many structures such as the Flavian Amphitheater, known as the Colosseum, and also in aqueducts such as the Ponte du Gard. Round arches transfer weight along the curve of the arch to the sides. The Italian Renaissance incorporated architectural design from Greece and Rome within their architecture. Italian Renaissance art architect Brunelleschi, for instance, utilized both, both uh, Corinthian capitals and round arches within the church he built called San Lorenzo during the Renaissance. Therefore, the Metropolitan Museum features Renaissance style through the Corinthian capitals and round arches, although that style extends further back into history to ancient Greece and Rome. Let's now discuss how the Metropolitan Museum features Gothic style. The Met features Gothic influences in the pointed arches, as this was a main feature of Gothic churches. I'd like to provide you with more background information and history on the Gothic style. What is Gothic architecture? It stems from the Middle Ages in France. The emergence of Gothic style began with three great French cathedrals, St. Denis, Seine, and Notre Dame of Char. Two central leading figures, Abbot Suger and St. Bernard of Clairvaux, greatly contributed to the development of the style. Characteristics often included geometry, ribbed vaults, and the importance of light, stained glass, as well as pointed arches. There were no wall paintings uh, or mosaics in these cathedrals. The beauty of proportions and geometry took precedence over paintings, so these cathedrals have little decoration, creating an austere appearance, although the architectural design itself is quite complex. 
The Gothic style emerging in France extends to England and also to America. There was a Gothic revival in America from 1850 to 1900, in which you see this style influencing many American cathedrals. St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York is an example of the Gothic style. Although the Metropolitan Museum is not a cathedral, it includes pointed arches, characteristic of the Gothic style. In America, the design of many cathedrals typically took inspiration from the Gothic cathedrals in France, while American government buildings typically took inspiration from the Renaissance and Greek classicism. In conclusion, within the Metropolitan Museum, we see the unique combination of both styles, both Gothic and Renaissance.